Hi, my name's Sue Penn, and I'm a free spirit designer and a mixed media artist. I This is my first video on YouTube, and I'm excited to try new things and show you how I, how I paint my paintings and what process I use. Um, I'd love it if you commented, if you emailed me, if you followed me on Facebook. Um, I'm, I'm open to questions. I'd love to hear from you. So what we're going to do today is just a simple background. Um, people have asked me to show them how to do a background. I'm going to show you an example. This one isn't quite done yet. I haven't done all the sides, but I'm going to bring it in and show you kind of different parts of it. I'm, I'm a messy painter. I paint fast. If you actually want to make the same thing, I would suggest um, re-watching it and stopping it and painting and then start over or start again where you left off. All right. So I'm not going to paint exactly the same one. I'm just going to play with colors. To me, painting is like playing. All right. I'm going to switch it over so you can see my work area. All right, here we go. Um, this is a wooden palette that I use. I bought like 25 of them to, um, to do a class. Never did the altered pa palette class, so I started using them. And people seem to like them. I've actually sold some. Um, they're fun, they're funky, and I like doing it this way. So I'm going to go ahead and put my paints on the palette. Um, I've got all kinds of them here. I'm just going to randomly do it. Every background I do is a little different, although I do use a whole rainbow of colors. I had a little girl once tell me her favorite color was rainbow, and I said, My, me too. I love rainbow too. So I use all different sorts of heavy body acrylic paints. If it's got the right color, I don't really care who makes it, although some are more transparent than others. Um, I get them on the internet, I get them at Hobby Lobby, or as my grandson says, Hobby Wobby. Go to Hobby Wobby. <laughs> all right, get some pink in there. And I might not use all the colors, but then I'll actually start another background with the leftover paint. And I need some bright lime green. The color that I'm using is actually a little brighter than it shows on the screen. It's that whole rainbow thing. This is one of my favorite ones. It's a deep turquoise, and when you use another color to lighten it, it's absolutely gorgeous. Of course, I really like anything blue-green. Turquoise, teal, aqua. All right, I need some reds and oranges and yellows. I need the girl colors. Sorry about that. My kids used to say, I'm not using the green cup if she if it was one of my daughters. Because it's a it's a it's a boy color. So sorry. All right. This actual this is what I use instead of a white a lot of times. It's the um it's Brie Reese's pale yellow. I don't know if it's still available. I'm hoping it is, because I love it for mixing. All right, need some reds. I should probably follow the color wheel, but I don't always work. But I, when I start a palette, I kind of keep using the same spaces. Some people would go starting with do the Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Um, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Oops, I was gonna I was gonna lay out the colors I'm using so you can see. Might have to do a couple backgrounds. I've got enough paint on on here. Okay. 
already have paint on my hands. It's a it's a working hazard, workplace hazard. What else did I put on there? Put the orange. I probably don't need to put every paint I own out. Okay. Sorry. Taking too long. All right. I think that's what I've got on my palette. And then I'm going to grab a canvas. Here we go. And I usually start in an upper corner with sort of a highlight. And I dip I dip my brush in more than one color at a time. Now I'm switching to yellow, kind of blend it. I don't really have any rhyme or reason. But I leave, I leave brush strokes showing. The more you brush it, the more blended it will become, but I kind of like to see those brush strokes. Oh. Kind of brush back up into it. That makes kind of an orange, so I'll add a little more orange over here. The more the more paint you have on your brush, the less white spots you'll see. So I need to go back. And I kind of do a back and forth, at least on this type of background, I'm doing a back and forth kind of motion, kind of like waves kind of this kind of mo motion. And you can always turn the painting upside down. And you can do this on a um, an easel, too. All right, I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to switch brushes because I want to s transition over into... Since this is a multicolored background, sometimes transitioning is hard, but I want to transition into yellow and then into green. Oh, see, I'm already going to run out of my pale yellow. Let's see, and I can come back and put a little green on top of that pink. And don't overbrush it, because then you'll get mud when you're, you know, there's warm colors and cool colors. If you're, if they're adjacent and you overbrush, you're going to get mud. But my motto is you can always paint over it. You can always let it dry and you can always paint over it. I think I'm going to go from the green kind of into some blue, into some light, light, permanent light blue is actually one of my favorite colors too. And Hobby Lobby has it and so does Michael's. Bring that blue back in. and move my water out of the way without tipping it over onto the floor off the edge of the table. I'm gonna come back in and go over the top to blend it.
bring that back over. Now I'm going to kind of start going a little farther down the blues and greens. I actually need a blue that's more opaque or a green that's more opaque. That's a little too too tra transparent. So I'm putting a little bit of this out and a little bit of permanent light green. That's a cobalt green. Oh, that got a little gummy. It's a little on the old side, but that's okay. It just adds more texture. When you can't, when your paintbrush doesn't move anymore, throw it away. Kind of going back up here. Hopefully you can, oops, I'm going to have to put more yellow on top of that. Now I'm going to go back into some more blue. Keep the color going down. And then I'm going to bring my favorite in, my deep turquoise. Needs a little more contrast in there. Using the permanent light blue to, with the turquoise to kind of make sure the brush strokes show. I'm not really big on mixing colors. I just use them straight out of the tube. I feel like I don't mix them on my palette, but I dip into one, more than one color and that. Um, makes it kind of blend without actually mixing a color up. Putting some green back in. All right. I'm going to go back and work on the red and I'm going to try to figure out how to transition red into blue and green. I'm going to use a little yellow here. And I I have quite a few paint brushes ready to go for this. I don't want to take the time to wash them. Kind of using the yellow to transition a little bit. Boy, I need more contrast in that red. Use some pinky red too. You know what? Hang on a second. I'm going to go over and grab a darker red. Gonna try this one. Yeah, it's a little gummy also. I think it's called naphthol. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> um, but it's a little bit darker of a red. It's got a little more body to it. Still dipping in more than one color. Then I, I kind of figure it out as I go, but I'm going to add another blue to the palette. Not just have a turquoise. Kind of start blending that in to the turquoise and greens. <laughs> I'm 
Now I need a little, hope I'm not blocking your view, view too much. Put a little, see that light, how that light blue on top of the dark shows all the brush strokes. Okay, this is the tricky part. Blue. Blending into the red. Sometimes I actually let this, let it dry a little before I start doing that. See, I just kind of get some of the paint off my palette, load up my brush, and just kind of, well, maybe it's not going to do it very well. Maybe if I do a little pink, we'll get kind of a purple thing going. Gets a little muddy, but I also think in terms of this is a background and something's probably going to go over the top. I'm going to pull some pinky red into this corner. Yeah, that makes a little purple. Then I can work my way back up. I'm going to get my paintbrush that has the warm colors on it. Don't, I don't add any water to my paints. I like the thickness and you really shouldn't add much water to acrylic paint anyway. It won't bind to the canvas like it should. There. Well, maybe not. <laughs> what can we do? That's, I don't, hopefully you can see it on the canvas, but that's blending a little better. And go back, grab some of the yellow. It's kind of a common transition between green and red. Now I'm going to go back and also try to cover up white spots. Pull that yellow and pink back in here. It's kind of choppy, so I'm going to bring the lighter colors down through here and kind of move them over that way so it's not so lined up, I guess. And then bring a little more line. And then when I get too much of a color next, ne so I got too much lime over the top of the blue. So I just grab some more blue or turquoise and go back over it again. And then if I do it too much, I can go back to the lighter color. I'm going to go up here 
It's okay to bring a little bit of the darker in. Grab some of that pale yellow, help blend it. All right, we're getting closer. I kind of bring, take colors from up here and throw them in the bottom just to tie everything together. Looks like I need more lighter st stuff going on down here. I use acrylic paint because I, I'm an impatient painter. I don't want to wait for oil paint to dry. <laughs> Needed a little more turquoise. Put it back. Put it back in there. I think we've covered up most of our white spots. I mean, when it's dry, I can also go back in with a little bit. All right. See some little bit of white showing through. And it's okay if white shows through. It's not a huge deal. But the more paint you have on your brush, the better coverage you'll get. I think I'm overthinking this one. Get a little pink. All right. I think I better leave it alone. So what I do is I like to either... Well, there's three different ways you can do your edges. You can do white, but I didn't, I tape, when I'm doing white, I tape my edges off with blue painter's tape. Um, I've done black edges where I actually paint the edges first, but in this particular canvas, I'm going to just take what's left on my palette and do my edges. And it kind of can brush them in. Great way to use up that extra paint. And I kind of still brush it out like I was doing on the front of the canvas. Then I'm going to, just because there's red next to this spot, I'm going to paint this edge red, kind of work it up into there. Now let's go back up here. Get some pink and some yellow. Sorry. Need to. First video, just learning how to make sure you see everything. All right. I need to get a little more yellow out. Now, once again, with yellow, I can transition into green and the I kind of fill in that gap with a little paint. Now I'm going to do some greens and 
blues over here. Okay. So this makes it so the paint just continues around the edge of the canvas. Then you don't have to frame it. And I use a wider, I used a wider deep profile canvas for this one. So you definitely don't have to frame it. You can hang on the wall just like this. And this, I can oops you can't see sorry <laughs> covering up the white kind of running out of blues. I don't really want to put a whole lot more paint on my palette. Yeah, I'm going to have to. I've been known to just not even use a palette at times, just squeeze the paint right on the paintbrush. You don't necessarily have to blend the sides as much. Okay. Now I'm going to go back and get some more red and then we'll be done. All right, that's our finished background. I This is a type of background I did with my fabric line called Flourish for Free Spirit. Whoops, missed a little. Okay, I'm gonna show you some close-ups. All right, here's our finished canvas. Let's see if I get in a little closer, you can see more of the detail. And it actually is not as defined as it looks. I mean, the pinks and reds and blues do blend in more in real life. Okay. It was fun doing this. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for watching.